Hey everyone, Dr. David Clark here. I want to talk today about the connection between COVID-19 infection and Hashimoto's. So obviously COVID's been on everyone's mind for the last few years. And one thing we know about COVID is that it loves to stimulate autoimmune problems. So I'll stop there and we'll say, we'll just kind of define that. So what does autoimmune mean? Autoimmune means that your immune system is attacking you. So instead of attacking viruses or bacteria or things like that, it is attacking your own tissues. And there are hundreds of different types of autoimmune conditions. And one we're talking about today is Hashimoto's. And that is the name given to when your immune system attacks your thyroid gland. Now specifically what it attacks is inside the thyroid gland. There's an enzyme called thyroid peroxidase, which is an enzyme that your thyroid gland uses to make thyroid hormones. And there's another substance inside your thyroid gland called thyroglobulin uh, that also gets attacked in Hashimoto's in some cases. So there was a great paper that came out last year and it looked at thousands of people that had COVID and they didn't even have to have a uh, major infection. It could have been a mild or asymptomatic infection. And what the researchers found is that COVID likes to stimulate autoimmune problems, whether you're a man or a woman. And maybe I'll do some other videos if you guys want to see them. You can just comment and ask if you want to hear about those. Uh, but what the most common autoimmune problem that gets stimulated in women who've had COVID, whether a mild infection, asymptomatic, or, or bad, is Hashimoto's. Now in men, the presentation is a little bit different. It tends to be a little, the most common is a little more kind of a lupusy type presentation, which we'll talk about in another video. Uh, but in this one, that's what we know. So if you had COVID, and if you ever tested positive for COVID even, and now you're starting to have the following symptoms, fatigue, weight gain, constipation, muscle pain, uh, excessive need to sleep, hair loss, depression, anxiety, it's time to get your thyroid checked. Now, <laughs> that's an easy thing for me to say, uh, but that brings up a whole nother uh, ball of wax that we're gonna have to talk about and you're gonna have to kind of educate yourself on because if you go to get your thyroid tested, to get tested for Hashimoto's, there's a couple tests you have to get. The two tests you have to get is thyroid peroxidase antibodies, and you have to get thyroglobulin antibodies. And then, of course, you get these other tests that are called thyroid function tests, which is your TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, thyroxin, T4, triiodothyronine, T3, and then some doctors will also order like a free T4 or a free T3, and those are the tests you look to see if your quantities are abnormal. So if you've had COVID, tested positive for it, and now you're having any of those symptoms I mentioned and they've been kind of hanging around, now's the time to get checked to see if you have some flavor of Hashimoto's because there are different kinds of Hashimoto's. I'll go through them briefly. So over here on this side, we have something called euthyroid Hashimoto's. Now that EU word means uh, true thyroid, or it means that your thyroid quantities, the hormones, they're not abnormal yet. So your TSH and your T4 are normal, but you have the antibodies that are high. About 75% of people that have that eventually transition all the way to the other end of the spectrum, which I'll go over in just a second. The second kind of stage of Hashimoto's or flavor is called subclinical Hashimoto's, and that's where you have the positive antibodies but now your TSH is a little bit elevated. The T4 or T3 are fine, but the TSH is elevated. That is called subclinical. I know that the terminology kind of stinks, but that's, that's what it's called. And a lot of those people transition to overt Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. And that is the last step in the spectrum, is sometimes just called hypothyroidism. Uh, sometimes not the word Hashimoto's isn't even put in there because doctors don't even test for it. But if you've got Hashimoto's, the antibodies, and your TSH is high and your T4 or T3 are low, then that is what we call overt or just kind of regular uh, Hashimoto's hypothyroidism. And those are people that need to take medication for sure because now your thyroid gland can no longer make the hormones that it needs. So you do have to take uh, hormones to replace it, but that is usually just the beginning of the story because Hashimoto's is an inflammatory condition and it likes to create an additional type of thyroid problem that's not just the fact that you can't make hormones, it likes to create a usage problem where it affects your thyroid hormone receptors uh, and affects your ability to use the hormones that you're now taking. And so the problem is, <laughs> and my long way around that, the problem is 
is you can have normal looking quantities, TSH, T4, T3, whatever, but not be feeling like that and not be uh, uh, behaving like that because the thyroid hormone receptors are being, I guess the easiest way to put it, they're being made to malfunction, usually by the inflammation and the cytokine load from the Hashimoto's. I would say 90% of the Hashimoto's patients I see are already taking medication, but they don't feel good. They feel like they're, feel like they're hyperthyroid still, and it's because they're not getting the usage benefit of those hormones. And where that could be starting for you in this last three or four years is if you've had COVID. Now, normally we talk about Hashimoto's as being a very, you know, genetic type of condition. And yes, you probably will be, wor you probably have more, uh, more probability to get Hashimoto's uh, if you have a genetic history, like if your mom had it or your sister had it, or you have some other autoimmune condition and you have COVID. But uh, the research that's been done so far makes no distinction between whether you have to have that sort of genetic predisposition. You can have had COVID because it's a virus and has so many different uh, epitopes and there's so much molecular mimicry that can happen that that can provoke Hashimoto's all on its own. So here's my kind of takeaway for you is if you've had COVID, you've tested positive for COVID, and again, it doesn't matter if it was mild, asymptomatic, or symptomatic, and you've been having some of those thyroid symptoms I named earlier, which is hair loss, weight gain, depression, uh, muscle and joint pain, excessive need for sleep, uh, coarse hair, hair falling out, it is time to get checked. So make sure you're working with a doctor that knows the following. Number one, knows that COVID can do this. Knows number two, how to properly test your thyroid to see if you have Hashimoto's and to check your thyroid function. And number three, knows what to do about the autoimmune part of things because that is the part that often gets left out when we're talking about treating someone that has Hashimoto's. Yes, you probably have to have thyroid hormone replacement, but that's just the beginning. So make sure you're working with someone that understands all that stuff I just told you about.